Finally, after a lifetime of dreaming of seeing Batman and Superman on screen together, and after three years of waiting since its announcement, Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice is finally out, and I'm here to review the most, my most highly anticipated movie ever. What's up everybody, Night Batman here with another movie review, reviewing this time Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. And I will warn you that this review has some spoilers in it, so if you haven't seen the movie yet, please do not watch this review, as I will be talking a little in depth with some things about the movie, especially things I liked and didn't like. This movie takes place a little after Man of Steel, uh, how the world deals with Superman being introduced to uh, Earth and also, uh, you know, some of the hostility they, fe they face towards him. And also, most especially, how Bruce Wayne slash Batman feels towards Superman, especially after he was actually there during the incident in Metropolis with the Black Zero and uh, Zod and Superman's fight. So, um, you know, he is really hostile and paranoid about Superman because of uh, what he's capable of and seeing all the damage left in the wake of their uh, arrival. So he, he's been preparing and getting ready to, uh, you know, take down Superman should ever he uh, go wrong or, you know, should uh, something provoke him. The title even says it all, Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. But unfortunately, the movie doesn't really focus that much on the Batman v Superman part of the story. Story-wise, there are so many things going on. There are so many little subplots dealing with the events after Man of Steel and it's showing how the road is still uh, either accepting of has either accepted uh, Superman's arrival or there are still people who are hesitant and maybe even fearful of him. And then there's also the story with someone who was actually affected from the Black Zero event and who actually lost his legs in it. Then there's also the story with Lex Luthor and him trying to take out Superman. And then there's also the story with uh, Wonder Woman and uh, you know her own little uh, uh, agenda in the movie. And then there's also the Dawn of Justice part of this where it is trying to help build the the whole world of the Justice League and trying to introduce it. With all these subplots going on, it's so hard to focus on Batman and Superman because they are supposed to be the main focus of this movie, but with everything going on, it feels like their uh, main story and their main conflict is kind of minimal compared to everything else, or at least it just feels like it had to be balanced out with everything else that's going on. And some of the things that I was also really excited for, like the, the Senate hearing that involves Superman, I was really expecting more from that scene, but it was a lot shorter than I expected. This is actually one movie, I have to admit, I had to see see just a second time just so that I can give a more uh, final standing point for this because I when I first saw it I was pretty split on it. Zack Snyder did take out 30 minutes of the movie but he will be releasing uh, the movie with those extra 30 minutes in the summer on blu-ray with the ultimate cut and that'll be rated R so I'm hoping that one will really improve the story because there's just so many subplots going on that it like sometimes it felt like they jump between too many scenes too much and uh, sometimes they don't always uh, really bridge together perfectly. But if you kind of like like sit back and after viewing, you like kind of look at the whole movie, you can see how it fits in. And let's just also talk about the big climactic fight that involved Doomsday, Wonder Woman, and Superman. First off, as a, as a fanboy, that was a really big fanboy moment. Seeing Superman, Wonder Woman, and Batman just standing together and taking on Doomsday together, that was just a dream come true. And seeing them on stream together was just... It was just awe-inspiring. I just loved it so much. And Wonder Woman was so badass in this. Gal Gadot did a really good job as Diana Prince, but an even more badass job as Wonder Woman. Her action scene was really intense, and I bet and uh, I bet that she's going to really leave a lasting impression for a lot of people watching this movie. But of course, I, I did feel like Doomsday came in way too soon in this. I mean, we uh, in this DC Extended Universe, Man of Steel was the first movie, and then now we have Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. I feel like the Doomsday would have felt a lot more uh, effective in a solo Superman movie, and uh, it would have been so much better to see him and Superman fight one-on-one. -on -one. And I will say that this is a really big spoiler. The fact that they already used the death of Superman story here because of course Superman does give his life to fight Doomsday. I guess it doesn't really feel impactful when he actually does uh, when he does die because it just feels too soon and you know you're still kind of growing in to uh, getting attached to Henry Cavill Superman. And I actually really like Henry Cavill Superman. I like him more here than in Man of Steel. Uh, he was good in Man of Steel, but I guess since there's a lot more material for Superman in this, it's really nice to see. It's really nice to see him shine in this movie because I really like this version of Superman by Henry Cavill. I just wish that Doomsday was safe for a later point, and that maybe they used another vil main villain for them to fight in this. 
um, because Doomsday was too soon for this. And then there is Ben Affleck who plays Bruce Wayne slash Batman. And I have to say right now, first, I wasn't really uh, up for him being Batman. But after seeing that first picture of him as Batman, I was like, wow, that is Batman from the comics leapt out of the pages. And then when I watched this movie, I thought not only did Ben Affleck do a really good job as Bruce and Batman, but he's just really interesting to watch on screen, which is something that uh, I felt in the Dark Knight trilogy. But uh, here it just feels way more intense, which is really, really good to see. This doesn't tie in with the Dark Knight trilogy. That is his own universe. It doesn't tie in with this DC extended universe. So I'm glad to see this version of Batman who can actually stand his ground in a fight uh, alongside Superman and Wonder Woman. That is really cool. But the one big complaint I, I had about this Batman was unfortunately, it really felt like he was a little too reckless where it, it looked like he he did act where he wasn't really in control of the situation where the Batman in the comics would definitely handle the situation without maybe having anyone die. But in this movie, he is solely responsible for a few deaths in there. Uh, after my second viewing, I realized, okay, some parts here, maybe like it looked like they could have survived, uh, but maybe it just looks like they didn't. Or there were some scenes where, uh, or some moments where maybe the villains were kind of responsible for their own death, you know, maybe it was just accidental or collateral damage. But then there was that one moment with the Batwing where he shoots those trucks with machine guns attached to it. Those guys around it and on it are definitely dead. And I really, really didn't like that the first time I saw the movie. I do not like seeing Batman kill because that is the character. He, uh, sure, when he first came out, he, he has killed people before, but then... The, the character, you know, uh, when Bill Finger came in, they made some changes to him and he had that big moral code against killing and that's what I really enjoyed about him. So I guess after that second viewing, I kind of let a lot more slide because it did feel like some of it was accidental, especially that flamethrower part. I felt like maybe he could have uh, disarmed that guy a little better, but maybe when he shot the tank, he didn't expect for it or wanted to blow up. Maybe he just did it so it wouldn't work properly, but I don't know. I guess I, I'm really trying to... Uh, defend this Batman because I really wanted this to be the perfect version of Batman but I even though this is my favorite I wouldn't say this is the perfect version. The rest of the cast are also great. Jeremy Irons does a really good outfit. I think I like this outfit a lot. Everyone who's returned from Man of Steel has really grown into their roles. And also I forgot to mention Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor. This guy I wasn't really expecting much from his portrayal because a lot of his roles they do feel the same so you do get that vibe here but I do like how he did add some craziness to Lex Luthor because Lex Luthor is a smart character, but I did like how Jesse Eisenberg added a creepiness to him, which is really interesting to see and uh, really did make him for uh, a creepy villain, uh, especially towards Superman. Uh, I, wish, I, just, I guess I just wish that he wasn't that creepy. Maybe he just felt a little... Mo but, I, but I do f like how he does show he has some control over uh, you know people in this movie, which is really interesting. <clears throat> so overall, I have to... So overall, after all... The action scenes are also really fun. The action scenes are also pretty cool. Um, again, even though Batman is a pretty reckless in those action scenes and some lives were lost, it was cool seeing him in action. The big fight against the Doomsday was really intense, really epic. Seeing uh, the Trinity together teaming up, that was really fun to see. But unfortunately, the overall movie, it just didn't really leave like a really big lasting impression on me. I really did want to love this movie. I really, really was excited for this. This was my most anticipated movie ever. And right now it's going to be the Justice League movie. But I am kind of worried now because after seeing this, uh, you know, I'm worried where it'll go. But I'm I'm still hoping that it can turn out to be a great movie. But for this Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, unfortunately, there's just way too much going on that even the whole conflict between Batman and Superman just felt uh, minimalized by all of the others. So overall, I'm going to give this movie a 3.5 out of 5. I didn't say, I wouldn't say I loved it, but I wouldn't say that I hated it. But I did like it. It wasn't a great movie, but it was a good movie. And I really did enjoy it. And I don't mind watching it more and more times again. But it just didn't have that lasting impression on me uh, that I was hoping for. And honestly, I kind of feel like maybe even Man of Steel was a little better than this. And that is kind of sad to say, but it is just the way I feel. So I do give this movie a 3.5 out of 5. I'm hoping maybe I can do another review when the Ultimate Edition comes out in summer on Blu-ray. I will definitely buy that because I want to see what this movie could have been with those extra 30 minutes and I, I felt like it really did suffer from those minutes from those scenes that were cut out and from scenes that they probably could have done without you guys don't have to listen to me definitely go check it out there are people who are really loving this movie so who knows you might end up loving it. thank you for watching and take care Later.